Hi, we are here with Esther Ng, Chief Content Officer at Star Media Group. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning and good afternoon. <laughs> so I wanted to, uh, before we start, wanted to get a little bit of your backstory. So what brought you into journalism and how would you describe your career so far in Star Media Group? Um, I was a huge fan of the Lou Grant TV series. I'm very sure you're too young <laughs> to know this, but they are journalists and traditional media journalists. So I was quite taken by the whole series when I was younger. So and I thought being journalist, being a journalist at the time was pretty cool. So I decided to do something about it. When I got into university, I started writing journals at a very young age, at eight. So I've always loved writing. Um, and then later on, when I went to into university, I was in a media communication faculty, and there were like um, six or seven uh, branches that you could uh, get into. You have the advertising, the PR, the journalism, of course, uh, broadcasting, and quite a few others. And yeah, I, as, as, as I've said, I've always wanted to be a journalist. I chose journalism, not because it's easy, because it looks hard. <laughs> yeah. So you've done a lot in terms of, uh, from my understanding is you've sort of worked up the ladder in Star Media Group from the beginning to, to now when you're quite known for transforming uh, the media group into a digital first outlet. So could you talk a little bit about how that journey has been for you and what have you learned along the way? Mm, okay. I am Star Media Group's first chief content officer. I think first and foremost, what we need to do is change the mindset. And yes, even mine. As uh, forward thinking you think you are, you should always be even more forward thinking than you already are. I think the first, the, we, uh, my superiors did the, the, the right thing at the, um, the, the right thing from the start. They changed my title. I'm the first chief content officer. Everyone before me was the editor in chief. And then we had the group editor in chief. We had the group chief editor, but uh, they changed the title, uh, my, my, my job specs are yeah, exactly the same, but they made me the chief content officer to remind me that content is just not about the written word anymore. It's about TV, it's about social media, it's about visual, it's about data. This is what content is about. The word editorial is no longer there. It doesn't mean that we are, we are, we are any less editorial but we have to remind ourselves that we are content people. The, the, the journey has been quite um, interesting because we have, we, have, we have been trained a certain way. We have, we have been trained to be traditional media. We are a traditional media group, yeah? We started as that, but we have transformed ourselves to be something else. We are digital first right now. The journey has been quite interesting because it's a major shift. It's a major uh, mindset change. So I'm not going to say that, I, I'll be lying to say that um, we, are, we are there already, but we are definitely on our way. And that's really interesting that you mentioned uh, your title change, but with the exact same job description. But surely you must approach content a little bit differently from what editor in chiefs would approach um, editorial direction. You have to kind of do the same way, but for all the content that that you're producing or your team is creating and how do you how do you describe that approach and how might it differ from from um what other editor in chiefs yeah or before your yeah, predecessors before. yeah yeah my what i was trying to say is that the job specs are the same but um we are looking at it from the content perspective it's digital first we we don't forget print because we are still very much print it's just that print is a different animal than what it used to be even. You know, so when, when we say we are digital first, we mean we break our stories and we, we are very visual online. So we have um, stories being told via the data form and very, very much video 
and very, very much visual and it's interactive. So uh, we get the viewers on board as well. Um, um, how, sorry, what was the question again? Oh, how would you approach um, sort of your content direction as opposed okay. to, you know, just how a typical editor in chief would, would direct would their team, yeah. Yeah, before this we had, um, when we have meetings or when we get together, it's, it's very print centric. You know what we're going to do uh, t tomorrow because the our publication comes out only the day after, right? It's it used to be uh, what we're going to do tomorrow. This is what we should get. Uh, we should get now for tomorrow. Right now, it's just so different. You know, um, everything that I've learned in university, it's I'm not, I'm not going to say it's no longer applicable. But the the best lesson learned is just to be on the job. I don't think there is any other GCE who, who can learn so much on the job as in now, you know, I'm not, I'm not the only GCE, I'm not the only uh, um, editorial chief who gets to do this. It's exciting. It's exciting because you're learning on the job as well. You know, and, and, and right now we are no longer traditional. Everything is digital. So what you can do right now, that's, that's what matters the most. Sure. Thanks for that. Uh, I wanted to trace back as well a little bit about your journey so far before you got here. You did say um, that you should always aim to be forward thinking and more forward thinking than you are now. Would you say that this is a mindset that you've had throughout your journey? And how do you how do you push yourself to move in that direction at all times? Uh, it all, you know, every one of us, you need to have a dream. You need to have uh, an objective, a goal, and you just work towards it. You know, uh, we are from, as I've said, we are from the traditional media. And, and back then, uh, how we were trained, how we all started, um, the interviews are, are conducted so differently. I mean, we can still have the one-to-one -one now. It's always the phone. It's always face-to-face. -face. And now... Communication is so much easier. Uh, we can interview somebody via Twitter. We can do it via Facebook Live. You know, it's, it's not just about the phone and face-to-face -face anymore. This is the, this is the time we, um, we make use of the media as well. The media is changing, just, is changing. I'm not going to say has changed. It's changing and it's continuous. So I think before we do anything, we need to dream big and just move towards it. You know, um, at one point, having data journalism and have, having visual and data stories seems so daunting, you know, because we never told stories like that before. But this is the way to go. This is what the future is like. People don't want to just read written words. They also want to see visual. They want to see videos. You know, this was the dream a few years back. It's happening right now. And it's great because we were the ones, we are the ones to set the SOP. And you know what? The SOP changes all the time because there is no textbook to guide us. There is no guidelines because nobody has done this before. Other media are doing it at the same time. And I'm sure they're doing the same like we are, you know, you're figuring out your SOP, you're figuring out, you're figuring out what you can do and what you shouldn't. Oh, we can do this as well. There is no limit. So um, I'm part of that committee, the, the data journalism committee uh, within our content department we, because we have this segment called the data, the data group. And every week when we meet, it's about setting SOP and this SOP changes all the time. And, and to me, when you're from the traditional media, this is, this is unheard of because we had rules and it's right. kind of rigid, you know, it's kind of rigid compared to now. And, and, and now when we meet for this uh, social media meeting, we have digital meets, we have, um, as I've said, the, the visual meets, and, and, and we are setting the SOP as we go along. And, at, and that to me, it's a major shift from what it was like before. It's really interesting. And dealing with younger people, you know, and, and they have this, this explosion of ideas, which is really interesting. It is, it is definitely a daunting, daunting kind of process to have to approach change and what you said like an evolve a constantly evolving sops 
week after week in order to produce greater stories. What sort of uh, support system did you have when you're trying to to um, to sort of come up with a new framework that might work for different types of stories? So I'm guessing you must work really closely with your data journalism team, for example. Yeah. Our team is not a big team, and the person is uh, th that team is led by a very senior journalist. Because at the end of the day, while you dream big and you need to run far, you need somebody solid who is grounded. He's from the traditional media, but he's he's um, he's modern and digital enough to dare to try things, and and it's headed by him. His name is Raza. We are growing that team. But I'm also very lucky because I don't work within the, the walls of content. I have other departments sitting in that same committee. I have the tech person there, um, not tech person. I have quite a few tech people sitting, that's sitting in our team. And more, the most importantly, I have the data team, the data and analytics team. There is a different uh, uh, department, a specialized department all by themselves. And I have quite a few of them sitting with us, of course, and then the content team. The content team is a strong six of us, you know. So when we meet, I have the input from the tech team. I have input from the data team, the data analytics team. So um, we support each other this way, you know, and, and content people are all very story based. So this is the story. We should get this out and we should tell people this. Well, the, the analytics people will tell you, oh, this is what it means. I think, I think this is the story, but this is what it means. You have the answers in front of you. Their job is to ask the questions, right? They have, they have the numbers in front of you. Their job is always asking the right questions. So from their questions, we see a new line of question. that We, we, we see another story developing. So it's, it's great. I think one of the best decisions we made was to include these people. They have nothing to do with journalism. They're, they're, they're so fascinated, you know, with how reporters think. They're, they're so fascinated with uh, this is the approach that content wants to want, want to come from. But hey, what about this question, you know? And and, and we get fascinated by 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 these other team, you know. So one of the best thing we did was to consolidate. And we learn from each other. We learn from the other department. We, we even have people from corporate com join us because they'll look at um, an issue from a totally different point of view, you know? So it's interesting. That does sound like a remarkable decision, especially when you were able to, to sort of push that sort of change, not only in mindset, but also really just how to tackle a story differently. Um, would yeah. you say that's one of the 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 most satisfying sort of moments where, where you felt like you really made a change in the newsroom? You know, to answer your question about the most satisfying moment in my professional, <laughs> yes, you know, <laughs> because you dreamed about this so long ago and, and you're wondering, you know, the, the star is always the, the first to, to do things. We were the first mainstream media in, in Malaysia to go online. In 1995, we are 25 years old today. Our um, our TSOL, the, the acronym for the Star Online. So when we first started, um, it was very. It was just stories picked up from print, which was made digital. You know, which made online. Ah, oh, it was such a big thing. You know, and we had a Star Online. We had we we had a banner and we had um, a selected stories. We didn't have many stories at the time. We had selected stories from our, our print. We were still very, very print-centric at the time. And we took only a, a, a selected stories from print to go online. And it grew from there. Um, and, and later on, we had uh, the whole paper, the stories from the entire paper online. But we have grown so much. You know, the star online and the print paper, the, the, the print product, there are two different products right now. Of course, we're digital first, as we said. We are social media first. We are, we are TSOL first, the star online first. But print, we have not forgotten print. Print is a different animal. We need print for, for, for different things. It is a different approach to stories. Is to tell our readers the entire story. So you can't just stick to the star online or the e-paper or the social media. 
you need the print to tell you the whole story because we, we give a lot of analysis, we give a lot of commentaries, we give a lot of um, even interaction. Intera we, we have letters, right? Um, we, we, we do a lot of react stories in, on, um, in our print products. So it's basically the whole thing. It's not just online, it's not just offline, it's the whole thing. So in, um, when we talked about data, Back then, it's uh, it's so futuristic. But that was what what uh, eight nine years ago. We 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 thought about having stories told differently, you know, because now we can do it online. We have we have this list of statistics from from our uh, stats department. You know, many many years ago, they were just statistics, and 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 um, journalists of the yesteryears, you know. Um, they will approach the stories so differently. Of course, statistics, statistical stories are always interesting because you're you're playing with numbers. But now we can we can put it in a whole different platform, and that platform comes alive thanks to online, right? Thanks to digital, we are looking at the story so differently because um, the the chart will tell the story by itself, and and in it we embed. A lot of pictures we we, we put the uh, we create we design the, the 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 graphics the infographics ourselves is is from the content team you know and and these are the people who are from the traditional media so we are talking about poignant moments this is it because we have made it happen and um, we have so few people to look to 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 um, get advice from or, or or to get inspiration from because we were one of the first few to start it, you know. So um, it's interesting because we are um, journalists of the printed word, and now we are telling stories differently. We are we are telling the stories via data. We are telling the story via charts, via pictures. I, I I have learned that um, you know in from the traditional paper when you're talking about the traditional media and the print product, we always have this page that we are kind of proud of. It's called the, the picture page. So we get um, we can talk about the MCO. The MCO is our movement control order, which we just had about three months, right? So we 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 we, we always try to have a, a a page where we let the pictures tell the story. So we, we get the, pic, the best pictures of um, people buying stuff or, or uh, an empty park, you know, and we love uh, to have picture page picture pages like these. You, you just have very few words to describe what KL is like during the, the MCO. But via data, we call it the Star Plus, and that is a little segment in the Star Online we get to tell this story live. We get to tell this story via, um, it's online, it's different, it's digital. So picture, the, and we, we, what we do is we embed pictures and we have, um, we have a few lines to tell the entire story. So you know what, the, we, we have minimal words, but the picture, the the maybe eight to ten pictures will tell you the entire story and that works people love to read this people just love to go through what we have so um what it taught me was that we have always known that picture sells but via data it took us to a whole new plane so we have visual stories so as much as i i, I talk to you and and talk about how amazed i am with data stories I'm equally amazed with visual stories. So we, we are, that's one of the things we want to do and we want to continue doing visual stories. We can take pictures of lovely buildings and we put it together, you know, just to tell a story. And people like to read this. I like to read it. Visual is definitely a very compelling medium, especially nowadays where, where more information is increasingly presented in a visual format. I, I'm imagining the visual sort of elements in your stories must be very popular amongst your readers and amongst people who visit your website and interact with all those different elements. Yeah. But I'm also curious as to how you brought this change into the newsroom. As you mentioned, it were traditionally a print 
uh, sort of group as is most media companies out there. What was the conversation like, and how did how did you get them to like? <laughs> how did you get them to to you know give it a shot? And one of your questions was that um, what is the story of my struggle? Mm. I give the same answer all the time. It's a change in mindset. Because as I've said, you know, we began um, in a traditional media. And the thing is, that traditional media is still very much part of us, you know. So it's just, you know, in a different form. It's just a different animal right now, but it's still very much part of us. And something that we are very proud of because we started there. It's also one of our biggest challenges because unlike portals, you have only one platform. You break your stories online and you do everything online. We have we are constantly reminded that we have this other platform that we have to take care of, and that's our print. And we started there, and I I kind of like to think that we kind of we we, we kind of excel in that. You know, it's it's still very much part of our main platform. So it's challenging at the same time. It's also fun because we get to do this um, online digital thing which we, are, we, we have to keep doing because this is the way to go and this is where we want to be. But at the same time, we have this other animal that we can do whatever we want to do with it. And as I've said, it's just a different animal from what it was before. But it's equally important and it's, it's very important to us. So mindset, because these are um, not, not all of them, but many of them are from the, the yesteryears. Yeah, it's, it's still, we are trained from the, the traditional media platform change in mindset every one of us need to dream as i've said and i've never stopped sharing my dream <laughs> with with my teammates and the thing is that um the content staff um as i've um uh, they've been around for a long time and i'm i'm just um very blessed to say that we are a very well oiled machine it's been there forever. They know exactly what to do. But we need, a li we, need, we need to talk a lot. We need to communicate a lot. I, I think one of the things that I, I find very effective is to share my dreams with these people. They're all heads of their department. They can be the visual head. They can be the video head. They are the, the traditional print head. Of course, the digital media we. Um, it's very much part of the, the talk, okay? It's actually the center point of everything. But we share our dreams, what we want to do and, and how, we've got, how we want to get there. And um, it doesn't take um, a very long time for them to get on board, but um, the, the, the challenge or the struggle is to make sure they carry on and not fall off the, the, the track, you know? We, 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 we have this road that we need to go and this is the destination that, that we want to be at. Let's not lose track of it. But they are all on board. Share the dream with them, you know. Um, and um, I'm just lucky, as I've said, because we are a very well-oiled machine. We know exactly what to do in circumstances like this. My job is to show them it is like this that we want to do. It is like this that we, 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 we are going to do it and this is where we're going to do, this is where we're going to go, this is what, th this is what we need to do. So everybody will come in and, and, you know, they know what to do. I'm not saying that we are there yet, but we are definitely on our way. How do you foster the sort of teamwork between the teams? Uh, so I'm just imagining that, that the video people, the tech people, the, the writers, they might not, you know, naturally interact with each other, but how do you make them all collaborate? Do you do workshops and do you have writers pick up digital skills? Technologists learn the art of, of how to, to write concise, you know, two sentence descriptions that it can perfectly depict a chart. Or how do you sort of promote, not, not really cross reading, but cross collaboration in between the teams in your organization, especially uh, from a leadership position? You know, we meet a lot. We also have this um, WhatsApp group, which is, we we'll have uh, maybe a thousand messages. Oh, WhatsApp groups are the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. But we, we meet, even um, even during MCO, skeletal crew and all, but we meet. I think that's very important. You, you can meet 
uh, while you're at home. I'm on half day leave, you know. I'm trying to to finish my leave, you know. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll be on half day leave for the rest of my life because I really need to clear my leave. But see, I'm not the only one. You can still work from home, but we meet. We 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 brainstorm quite a bit, and um, I'm 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 lucky because, as I've said, many of my teammates are from the traditional media. They are they are all editors now. They are all heads, but they are very very on board. <laughs> uh, when it comes to digital digital, they are very very on board when uh, when we want to do something new. They'll be they they'll go all quiet sometimes because it's like oh god, what does you what does she want to do right now? But um, they're on board. I've never heard a no, I don't want to do it. I've never heard it. So um, it's more it's more the okay, this is what we uh, this is what you want to do, this is what we should do. Okay, let's let's do it this way. But I think the the constant communication, the 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 constant talking to our 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 heads, not just the heads, the our young reporters as well, it helps quite a bit. I think we have to be open minded. We need to listen to the younger ones because these these are the people, as I've said, with the explosion of ideas. And I can sit with the younger ones and they'll come up, why don't we do this? And and I'll be like, Why didn't I think of that? You know? Yep. They're very good. Explosion of ideas. I'm always open to it. You learn from these people because this is their world. It's really great. I would love to have sort of a news leader like you who's very receptive <laughs> to all these changes, all these innovations. Um, sort of looking back, how would you say the environment for media nowadays, particularly in Malaysia, is different from, say, around 10, 20 years ago? Do you see any conflict if at all in terms of you know demographics race religion those are very sensitive areas i know from in indonesia where i'm from mm. um i was wondering if, what the environment was like in malaysia for you mm, i don't think that's that's quite i i don't think that's a major factor for me mm. the race them the the chinese um journalists quite a few of them everywhere actually so there's never been quite a challenge for uh, it's not a struggle for me it's not that um i'm only a bit astounded that i'm one of the very few um editors in chief who are women we hmm. need to change that because when we have meetings and i'm, I'm meeting um my peers from other media they're always men and and most of the time i'll be the only other women you know uh, only other women and perhaps you have one or two others, but we need to change that. And in the star, I'm the fourth woman GIC, uh, GCE, the, the fourth woman editor in chief. So it's, it's, it's not an um, anomaly with the star. And I, I see this trend continuing, you know, and I, um, I do think women, uh, women EICs or women editors or journalists are better than men. We're just different. You know, men are very uh, big picture. Women are very big picture and small picture. <laughs> they are very, they, they go for the nitty gritty as well. Mm -hmm. We are big picture and we make sure that the nitty gritty is uh, uh, um, uh, attended to as well. So that, that I always see that because I've, I've had bosses who are men, I have bosses who are women and, and they're, they're different. And I, I, I um, um, Bosses, all these bosses inspire me. I, I, I want to be something like that. Oh, I don't want to be something like that. Oh, but both uh, men and women, okay? My bosses, there have been like two, three women and, and two men. Three men who are my bosses. Um, I, I, as I've said, I've got a lot of experience in dealing with men bosses and women bosses. And um, all of them have been role models for me, you know? So, yeah. Oh, that's great to hear. And it's it's great to know as well that that the star is an, an anomaly where it looks like everyone can thrive. <laughs> so Everyone uh, can thrive. So, just to uh, end the conversation, do you have any words of wisdom or advice <laughs> for our members? And you're clearly <laughs> someone with, uh, coming from a place of a lot of experience. 
uh, especially for everyone who's um, currently trying to face the changes head on, be it with digital, with newsrooms, and unfortunately, some of the layoffs that are associated with it, yeah. or or young journalists who are struggling to get their foot in the door. Um, mm. What would you say to, do you have anything to offer for any of these people? Yeah. Don't lose faith, you know. Uh, yeah, we are going through tough times right now. But, you know, there are a lot of journalists want to be out there. But you are the trained journalists. You are the real journalists. We can talk about the digital platform. We can talk about meet. We can talk about uh, the visual platform. We can talk about the traditional bat- platform. That, but these are, at the end of the day, just platforms. The tenets of journalism is the same. You go for accuracy. You go for you go for things that you you're there to inform. You know you you're here to educate, to spark discussion, and never forget you're there to entertain as well. That's part of your role. So don't let the platform scare you. And this is not going to be the end of it. The other guy, I, I don't know what it's going to be like. Even three years from now, even two <laughs> years from now, there might be another yeah. platform. But these are just platforms. The tenets of journalism stays. They'll always be the same. So don't lose faith. You're always relevant. And with that, we thank you so much for your insights. Thank you so much for being with us today, Esther. Thank you, Rebecca. Been pleasure talking to you. Sure.